six parameters. Okay, the six parameters are practice for bodhisattvas to reach Buddhahood. We, if we practice the six parameters, more likely we'll be getting back to our true Buddha nature, enlightened and become a Buddha. So it's all through cultivation. How do we cultivate? The most important thing is we have to be sincere. Truly want to do it. It's all in your heart. It's not really how well you do it or how much you give to others. It's more how sincere you are into your practice. Okay, so it's all about sincerity. Now let's talk about the six parameters. The first one is giving. There are three kinds of giving. The first is giving of wealth. When poor people are in need, we try to give them money or food, whatever we can to help them out. That is the kind of basic thing that we give to people to make them have a better life. The second kind of giving is giving of dharma. Nowadays, not a lot of people have no food or no clothing. Most people are just empty inside. So when people are empty inside, the only thing you can give them is dharma. Wisdom. Help them become enlightened and not be sad about their current situation and be out of the sorrow that they're currently in. We want to give people as dharma or wisdom as we can. The third giving is giving of fearlessness. When someone is walking in the dark or they're very depressed, can we just be by their side and help them out? When our friend is in need, when they're really, really in pain or they're sick, we try to stay by their side and make them feel better. A lot of times it's all about a sincere heart into helping others. That's what we call a bodhisattva, who's really on this earth to help other people. And that's the purpose of our lives. The second parameter, withholding precepts. There are a lot of precepts that Buddha said for his disciples. There are hundreds of them, but they all fall into three categories. What are the three categories? The first is abandon evil. Restrain ourselves from doing evil deeds. Okay, for example, stealing, lying, killing. These are all evil deeds that is not benefiting others. We're trying to get rid of our evil deeds and we cultivate all that is good. Cultivate goodness. So it's not enough just to get rid of our bad habits. We need to go out of our way to do good things. So that's cultivating goodness. The last kind of precept is benefiting others. So not only we get rid of our bad habits, we do good deeds. Our main concern is we want to benefit all other sentient beings. So with your existence on this earth, you're helping all other people. Okay, so your life is very, very meaningful as a bodhisattva. The third parameter is endurance. There are three types of things that we need to endure. The first is the biggest one, that's people. Okay? There are a lot of difficult people in our lives. Everybody faces difficult people. Okay? Sometimes you know they are rude to us, sometimes maybe they are rude to us physically or verbally, hurting us. But can you remain loving and compassion? That's patience. Can you still be kind when someone is hurting you or you want to fight back? A bodhisattva will always remain calm and loving compassion. That takes a great person to be able to do that. Our greatness comes out when we're able to endure. The second is enduring of environment. That includes this is too hot, too cold, it's raining, or even our legs are hurting or still sitting there. So that is still counting as the environment. That's something we need to learn to become better and enduring all kinds of difficult, harsh environment. The third kind of endurance is enduring of the Dharma. Dharma can be very difficult to understand. Sometimes it's really hard to listen to. It's really hard for us to grasp what's the meaning of it. 
For example, you talk about the Buddha nature. What does it look like? You don't understand. So you gotta endure it and keep listening to it. One day you will become enlightened. So you have to keep trying and be more patient. And that's kind of endurance. The fourth parameter is diligence. Or we put in a lot of effort into doing the three above. So this is pretty much the same as the holding the precepts. The first kind of diligence is wearing an armor. You know how a soldier, they wear armor? Wear armor to do what? Fight against the enemy. Who are the enemies? Your own bad deeds. Okay, so you're diligent in fighting the enemy of your own bad habits. Anger, your ignorance, your greediness. Okay, so we're putting on an armor of diligence to fight our own problem, bad habits. And we're diligent into cultivating all that is virtuous. So pretty much it's the same as cultivating all the goodness. We're diligent in benefiting all other people. How can we be of service to others? That's our purpose in life. What's the meaning of life? Meaning of life is we can be of benefit to others. That's our main purpose. How can we make this world a better place? That's why we're on this earth. How can we help others? A bodhisattva, this is what he or she thinks of. Diligent in these three ways. The fifth pyramida is the pyramid of concentration or deep concentration, samadhi. That's what we're trying to do here when we meditate. There are three kinds of deep concentration or samadhi. The first kind is called mundane. Mundane means worldly. You don't have to be Buddhist to reach this kind of samadhi. A lot of people, they don't need to learn Buddhism. In their meditation, they can see the past, they can see the future, they can fly, they can do anything. A lot of people can reach that level, but that is still called the mundane samadhi. But as a Buddhist, we try to go here, chance mundane samadhi. This is when you know about the reincarnation. It's very sad. We need to get out of the six rounds of reincarnation. That's called the trans worldly mundane meditation. Okay, that's what we're trying to do. The third type of concentration is called the supreme concentration. What's a deep kind of concentration? When we're fully concentrated in our own Buddha nature. When you're fully aware, I am the universal power. I am the source that created this universe. With my thoughts, I can create anything. That is the supreme enlightenment we all try to get to. This is kind of in line with the three types of wisdom. What are the three types of wisdom? Wisdom of words. If we don't have words, how are we going to understand the Dharma? The first type is a tool for us to learn the Dharma. So we call it the wisdom of words or literary wisdom. Because we have words, we're able to contemplate. If I don't speak, how can I guide you guys in the meditation, right? So you need words in order to develop contemplation wisdom. Lastly, we want to reach the wisdom of true mark. What's the truth about the universe? We all have the Buddha nature. That's the same as Buddha the most important thing that we need to realize. That's the biggest wisdom on this earth. When you realize you are one with the universe, you are not this identity that you take on this lifetime. You're like the big ocean, not a little bubble in the ocean. That's the ultimate wisdom. When you realize the supreme samadhi is the same as the wisdom of Chumak. The sixth Parameters, it gets rid of our defilements. Giving gets rid of our greediness. Precepts get rid of our what? Bad karma, because we don't do bad deeds, right? Endurance will get rid of, of our anger. The more you can endure, the less angry you'll be. 
the more diligent we are, it gets rid of our laziness. Laziness is a big problem. We all become lazy and will not succeed in your practice. Concentration will overcome our scattered mind. A scattered mind cannot succeed in anything they do because they're always having wandering thoughts, cannot focus. So we need to train our mind so it will be still and concentrate. Wisdom will get rid of our ignorance. We are all ignorant thinking that there is a self-identity. There's an ego. So we're trying to get rid of this ignorance by learning a lot of wisdom. So how do we learn wisdom? By listening to Dharma. The more you learn about Dharma, the more you contemplate on the Dharma, the more wisdom you achieve. So that's the sixth pyramid that a Bodhisattva is always contemplating. Uh, 16 years ago, when this temple was first opened, I was still working as an accountant. And one day, out of my one eye, I couldn't see. And it's like, it's the lens is broken. I went to the retina specialist, he said, you have a special retina disease. Blood vessel in the macula is bleeding. And I'm like, what's the chance of it happening again? And they said, uh, we don't know. We don't know because it's a rare disease. So I kept working, hoping it will never happen again. Six months later, it happened to the other eye. <laughs> so from that day on, my whole world is blurry. I cannot see the world anymore like a normal person. I'm pretty much half blind. Okay? That was 16 years ago. And I started learning about Buddhism. I give it all I got because I really want to find out how can I overcome this tragedy in my life. I was only 20 something. I just got married. Life was perfect. And all of a sudden, I'm in hell. You know, I couldn't work. I couldn't drive. I couldn't see anything. It's just the end of the world for me. And I started learning Buddhism. And I realized there is actually a way. I actually have the Buddha nature. I can still benefit the entire universe if I wanted to. So I started cultivating, changing all my bad habits, my selfishness, and try to be as good as I can. Now it's 16 years later. I am not blind. It's like a miracle. I haven't had any more bleeds. I haven't been thinking about my eyes. I just think about how do I benefit others. How everybody else get the benefit out of Buddhism that I got out. After that, I started doing everything I can and the world really changed for so much better. I am so happy. I want to you know, give it back to the world what I got out of Buddhism. Cultivating the six parameter is what I like to do every day because this is the way of life. It's not really like a study. It's a lifestyle that you just acquire. And this is who you want to be. And soon you will reach your true Buddha nature. So that's it for today's class. Thank <laughs> you.